Start recording. Great. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on the call today. Um, my name, or wait, well, if you're here for the No Boss COVID-19 Community Response Call, you're in the right place. Um, so thanks for coming. Um, we are here today. Uh, two organizations brought this together, uh, the Network of Bay Area Worker Cooperatives and the Sustainable Economies Law Center. Um, so I'll introduce myself and then uh, my co-facilitator Jasmine will introduce uh, herself. My name is Ricardo Nunez. Um, I work at the Sustainable Economy Law Center. Um, and we exist to bridge the gap in legal expertise needed to transition from destructive econo economic systems to innovative and cooperative alternatives. Um, and I think most of you know what we all do. And if you want to know more, you can check out our website. Um, and my co-facilitator, Jasmine, you want to introduce yourself? So, hello, everybody. I am Jasmine Stallworth. I'm Administrative Coordinator with the Network of Bay Area Worker Cooperatives, NOAA for short, um, grassroots organization of democratic workplaces dedicated to building workplace democracy in the San Francisco Bay Area and beyond. Um, you can check out our website, NOAA.org, to find out more and to see how you can get involved if you're not already. But if you're on the call, you probably are. So thank you for being here. Thanks, Jasmine. Um, so today's call, we just I just wanted to um, frame it for folks that the reason that we're coming together today is to um, share how we can support each other during this shelter in place um, period for the Bay Area um, and to share resources from government to our cooperative community to individuals um, on how to support each other during this time. Um, and then what was it? Uh, also, we wanted to give space for us. So this is going to be an interactive conversation. Um, and so we're going to ask you sometimes to put some stuff into the chat. And then at the second half of this conversation, we're going to break out into breakout groups. And I'll get into that in a second. Before we um, do all that, I wanted to invite Jasmine to give us a bit of grounding um, before we started our call today. So Jasmine. Yes, thank you. Um, before I continue, can people hear me better now? I was trying to use the phone so that it wouldn't be so, okay. Cool. So I'd like to invite everyone to find a comfortable, comfortable to sit, whether you're laying down, just allow your body to relax. Back to choppy. Um, my signal is not the best here. Uh, maybe turn off your video, Jasmine, and then um, it might help a little bit. Okay, testing, testing. How do I sound? Yes, yeah. <laughs> much better. Thanks. Okay, thank you. So, I invite you to sit comfortably, lay comfortably, and allow your body to take in a deep breath from your diaphragm. Inhale, exhale. Again, inhale, exhale, and continue on this repetition of deep breaths in and out. And with each breath in and out, I'd like you to inhale and ponder on what you'd like to bring to this experience. And as you exhale, release all the things that you won't attend to at this time, that you'd like to let go to be fully present in this call.
And on this next deep breath, scan from your crown, the top of your head, down to your root, to your feet even, the areas that need attention. Just simply observe those areas in this next deep breath. And now I'd like to invite you to breathe love into those areas. Breathe attention into those areas. And recognize that all of you is welcome here. Those areas that need attention and those areas that you feel confident in the strength that they bring. Now I'd really like you to focus on this next part and the heaviness that it inevitably will bring. But I'd like you to breathe in and out in honor of those that have already passed from this virus, the grief that you hold in your own body that exists before this virus was even a factor in that. And recognize that your grief is welcome here. All of you is welcome here. So take another deep breath in honor of the gratitude that you hold as well for yourself, for your work. Taking another deep breath for your community, for your home. for the city, breathing deeply, recognizing the strength, but also the challenges that our county is facing, that your county is facing, the state, the hardships that our country is going through right now, but also honoring the strength and the way that we're bonding through this time as a country. And yes, you're only one person, but you make up a beautiful, important, crucial part of this so please believe, breathe deeply for the contribution that you bring to this world. And on this last deep breath that I invite you to take, please utilize it as a moment to feel the loving breath that connects us all. So on the count of three, let's all take a synchronized breath. One, two, three. And release all the tension. And when you're ready, please return to the call as present as you can be, ready to dive in to the support network that exists between no boss and self and all the communities that you bring into this call as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Ooh. Welcome. Getting tingle. Okay. Um, thank you, no, I really appreciate that. I know I've been feeling a lot this week um, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, some lots of anxiety and fear and and so it's just good to like check in and let ourselves just feel that so thank you um okay so jumping into the um, agenda what we're going to talk about um the first half like I said 
we're going to be talking about resources. Um, and so we're going to talk about resources to take care of ourselves, because I think what a lot of us are trying to do, um, part of the cooperative community, is to make an economy that is human-centered. And so we wanted to start off with sharing some uh, personal resources for folks. Then we're going to go through the different resources that the government is offering at the federal, um, the state, and the city level. And then we're going to talk about the resources that our cooperative community is bringing, um, bringing to the table. And then we're going to go into breakout groups. Um, so let's see. Yeah, so we're going to have folks from the Federation talk um, today. Mo Kling is here to talk to the resources that they're compiling, talk about the different city offerings in our cooperative community. Um, so the breakout groups, the breakout rooms, we're going to try to do them by topic. Um, so we're going to have one on creating a no boss cooperative fund. Um, so I'll just uh, talk a little bit more about that later, or maybe I'll say just a little bit, but um, basically there's a few folks who want to create a fund and are willing to put some financial resources together to start that. And so how should that take shape? How should that look? Um, how should it be stewarded is some of that conversation. What about the children? Um, we want to have a conversation about um, what uh, resources are available for folks who have children during this time um, and different ways that we as a network can come together and support each other um, and brainstorm ideas of how to do that. Um, also talking about navigating financial challenges for worker co-ops and our members um, and what ways are there to collaborate. Um, we also have a breakout session on how our food service, um, there's a lot of food industry cooperatives um, in the Bay Area. And so how can they, how are they reorganizing um, to stay open and serve their communities? And then we want to create one space for emergent space. Um, and so those are the five. Um, I'm going to launch a poll right now. So folks who I think are on the, um, on the call, uh, or on your computers, there's a poll right now. Can you just let us know, like based off of those five, which one you think you'd want to participate in, just to give us a sense so that when we get to the breakout rooms, um, we might do some shuffling or something. But um, yeah, feel free to um, put, in, put in your um, answer into the breakout room poll, if you all are able to see that. Um, Ricardo, it's sassy. Can you direct me to where the poll is? So I launched the poll uh, in the past. It just like pops up on your screen, but if it's not popping up, um, the, I think it's the same order as this. And actually, there's a little mistake on here. Um, but um, okay, so people aren't able to see. It'll okay. Pop up. So okay, so I'm gonna um, we'll skip that. But yeah, if you want to put in the chat, then. Um, which one of these that you're interested in, um, let us know and we can uh, see what people are most interested in or if there's a critical mass in certain ones. So. That poll just popped up. Okay. Same. <laughs> it's these, just yeah. laggy. All right, so I'm going to do the poll. I think the poll would be helpful, yeah? Yeah, go for it. Thanks. Yeah. I think you might need to reopen it. It's telling okay. me it's closed. Oh, um, okay, so we just relaunched it. it. I yeah, I just relaunched it. Um, I, I'll help with the background thing. So I just relaunched it. Um, and if you typed it in, please uh, go ahead and see if you can use the poll instead. Otherwise, I'll just make my best guess between the people typing it in and the poll. Um, we'll figure this out. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Charlotte. Okay, so impact so far. Um, we sent out a survey before the call to get um, people to let us know how they've already been impacted. And so some of the responses were really, um, I, was, I was very concerned by a lot of the responses. People were closing um, their shops indefinitely, taking a quarter of a million dollar potential loss, um, that entire workplaces are being shut down and, and the impact on their families. Um, and so uh, that's what some, some folks have shared with us before. Um, and what would be useful on this call, folks said that they um, wanted to have a discussion about creating fun, so we're creating a space to do that. Um, 
applying for SBA loans. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, we're going to hold space for uh, navigating financial challenges, talk about federal, state, and local resources that are being available. How can we collaborate in using the breakout rooms to do that? Um, yeah, the big breakout rooms were informed by what y'all were telling us. So our first um, resource is, like I said, um, one that we wanted to center um, on people. And so here are a few resources that we found. The first is the Mental Health Association of San Francisco's Peer Run uh, Warm Line. So it's a non-emergency resource for anybody in California seeking emotional support, and they provide assistance via phone, web chat, on a non-discriminatory discriminatory basis. Um, it's a low threshold mental health resource that people can seek to support before they've reached the crisis point. So this is a great, like when you're starting to feel all those feels, um, this is a resource for you. Um, Oh, and one other thing before I continue, we have a whole database that we created. So all of the resources that we are going to be sharing in this entire presentation are in a database that has been shared with you already. So um, just, just as a reminder. Another resource that's been useful for me personally is um, Liberate. It's a free app that you can download onto your um, phone. Um, and it's a, a meditation app dedicated to empowering um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color community. Um, facilitated by people of color. Um, another is a document, this freelancers and community resources document that's been um, created and that's mostly for artists. I know there's a lot of artists and independent contractors in our network, so this is um, a resource for them. Um, and then finally, East Bay Meditation Center. Um, I don't know if Anshul Debra is on the call, if you're able to um, yeah. Hello. Hi. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about Easy Meditation Center. So thank you, Jasmine, for that grounding and for um, the organizers for giving me a moment to talk about the center. Um, for those of you that don't know, East Bay Meditation Center is located in downtown Oakland, um, and we offer meditation training and spiritual teachings from Buddhist and other wisdom traditions. And the center is really rooted in social justice, radical inclusivity, and shared leadership. Um, it was founded to provide a welcoming environment for people of color, members of the LB, LGBTI plus community, um, people with disabilities and other rep underrepresented communities. So some of our, I'll just speak briefly about some of our programs and offerings, um, which are now, most of them are now online on Zoom. We're working to get everything online. Um, so the first is practice groups. And for those that are unfamiliar, this is group meditation guided by a teacher and then a dharma talk on a theme uh, that the teacher chooses. So some of our practice groups are, um, one is the Alphabet Sangha, which is a meditation group for LGBTI um, plus same gender loving and two spirit communities. We have a people of color Sangha. We have a Sangha called Every Body, Every Mind, and that's for folks living with disabilities, chronic illnesses, differences, and limitations. We also have a teen circle, which I think is awesome, personally. Um, and then we've got a midday Sangha and a Maha Sangha, which are open to all beings. Um, just a little note on keeping these practice groups safe for folks in these communities. For example, the Alphabet Sangha or the People of Color Sangha. Um, each group kind of has its own way of um, dispersing a Zoom link and all of that information is available on our website. It's also in the notes and the other resources that Ricardo mentioned. Um, I'll also mention our movement groups, which I think are really important during this time. Um, we're all inside and just to keep our bodies moving and healthy um, and to drop into them safely. So we have Dharma in Motion, which is an access-centered movement practice. We have People of Color Yoga, which I've been a part of for years and I can't say enough about it. It's amazing. Um, hope to see some of you there. We also have Unhurried and Unbothered which is yoga for radical restoration um, and an invitation to slow down as an antidote to the violent pace of capitalism. Um, lastly, I'll mention our classes and workshops. Those are still happening and they're online. Two that are happening this month um, are tender self-care in the midst of pain. And those are for people living with disability, illness, or chronic pain. And everyday equity, Awakening Power, Love, and Justice, and that's how to catalyze interpersonal and collective transformation through experiential activities. 
Um, and the last thing I'll mention before I hop off is that we are, the center is run on gift economics. Um, so it's completely a gener generosity based model. Um, we really do believe that everyone has the inherent capacity for generosity and our center um, works from the value of abundance, trust and connection rather than scarcity, scarcity, fear and separation. So while our programs are not free, there's no set charge, there's no registration fees. Um, and we've been running on a generosity based model since 2007. So thank you so much. I hope to see some of you at the offering and I'm wishing you some ease in the days ahead. Thanks. And Anshul, sorry, I didn't uh, introduce who are what, who are you and how are you related to ABMC? I am the development coordinator of Eats Bay Meditation Center. So I'm on staff. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, so those are some resources that we wanted to center um, on us as individuals. Next, we're going to get into the resources um, that are going to be available to our uh, organizations and worker cooperatives. So, um, Mo Mankling, would you like to uh, take it away? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Um, it's good to see so many faces right now. Uh, that feels so important in this time. Uh, so. Yeah, I will, I'll keep this pretty brief, but um, if you haven't yet seen the Federation's list of resources, it's at usworker.coop slash COVID-19. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is curate through all of the many, 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 many resources that are out there, um, at least at the, the federal level and ones that are accessible nationally. Those are the ones that we're really focusing on. Um, so um, if you go to that website, you'll see there's resources for businesses, individuals, communities, um, a lot of webinars that we're seeing pop up. Um, we as the Federation will have a couple um, next week and um, and also we're trying to carry as much as we can in both English and Spanish so I know that that is a really huge um, piece of this is making sure that the, these resources are accessible as possible um, so everything that I'm finding and particularly for people with disabilities um, and people who uh, do not speak English um, I'm trying to uh, add in as much as we can um, you'll notice uh, Wonderfully that California happens to be the one state that is really prioritizing having things in Spanish, which is really nice. Um, so we're pulling a lot of resources there to source the rest of the country. Um, so that is updated daily, almost hourly. So, uh, and is, uh, you will, if you go there at any moment, if you go back uh, an hour from now, you will definitely uh see new resources like in the folder definitely um and uh, we're also working on a quick guide because even now there's too many resources in there to really be able to sort through it so um we view our job as um is to make it as easy as possible particularly for businesses to access resources um you can go to the next slide the one thing that i really want to focus in on is the economic injury disaster loans so you might have heard that SBA, uh, the Small Business Administration, just opened up a ton of funding um, in the first round, like the first relief package that went out. So I just wanted to give you a really brief overview of what that looks like. So what you'll see in red, the most important thing is everybody needs to start gathering documentation. So any business loss, receipts, budgets and projections, documents, um, whether you're like writing it down on a piece of paper or you can have it digitally, obviously digital, digital is good, but like written is just as good if that's what's, what's available to you. Um, right here um, is the, the basic filing requirements. So like this is what you need in order to apply for the loan. Um, and if you need help, um, there is help um, on, the, on the next slide, but basically it's gather documentation, apply for the loan as soon as you can, there's a verification and loan processing period, which we're expecting to be um, but at the webinar today with the SBA said 30 to 45 days, which is not good enough, but is what we have right now. Um, and that includes the, when the funds are dispersed. So if you go to the next slide, um, you'll see, so this is kind of the snapshot of what we're looking at right now. So the terms of these loans is if it's $25,000 or less, um, the screen just went weird on me. 
Um, but uh, I'll keep talking because I know it's on the slide. It's if it's twenty five thousand dollars or less, you don't need any collateral. Um, if it's twenty five thousand dollars or more, you will need collateral, and that usually comes in terms of real estate or um, or business assets. Um, so the the interest rates on those loans um, are about. 3.75% for businesses, 2.75 for nonprofit organizations. So like I was saying, um, it's about 30 to 45 days you could expect for those loans um, to process from beginning, from the time you submit to the end. Um, you'll see those numbers don't add up to 45 days, but that's just what uh, our best, best guess is. Um, the big question, will this work for worker co-ops? So um, we have been pushing um, them on, on the SBA on this front, um, as many of you know, for several years. Um, and um, our best directive from the SBA is uh, go ahead and apply for the loan. It might get delayed a little bit, but um, the more worker co-ops that apply for the loan, the more it will become really obvious that they need to pro provide more worker co-ops. Um, but what the SBA um, representative that, that I talked to today said that, um, that, that they're going to be very lenient with these loans. So please, please, please go do it as soon as you can. Even if you get denied, you will um, be able to appeal that denial. Um, but if you wait and don't apply, um, then they might just run out of funds. So it's best to just do it as soon as you can. Um, and make sure your application is as accurate as possible and complete as possible because um, errors might delay it as well. Um, there's a phone number there to call for assistance. Um, Spanish support is available. Um, like I said, we'll be posting Spanish resources on there as well. Um, and then you can always reach out to, to me at mo, mo at usworker.com. Um, I'll add that in the notes as well. And um, this is the main uh, source of uh, a, a financial relief that we know of right now, um, and we'll keep you updated on our website uh, for anything else that comes up. Awesome, thank you so much, Mo. Um, I know that there's a lot more to get through, but I kind of want to just like hold here for a second, because I think a lot of the resources for some of our businesses are going to be coming from the federal level. So um, Andrea asked what types of loans are available. Um, yeah, so this. yeah, I, th this economic injury disaster loan is the loan. That's like the main resource. So um, if you, uh, I'll, it's, it'll definitely be in the resources, but I'll also, I'll also add it in the chat, like the direct link to that, to that loan. Um, so there's like generally a bunch of different loans from the federal government, um, but in this particular one, it's, uh, it's, you're really just, Everybody knows what everybody's applying for right now, <laughs> so um, it's all it's all through one portal. So it, it all be coming from the same place. But that's the one you want to go for. Um, I have um, not. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't heard anything about forgivable loans. Not definitely not from the federal government. Um, and uh, but I, I have uh, keeping in tune for any of like a external loans to the federal government. I know that the Seed Commons um, is putting together a loan fund for workers right now. Um, and uh, in, the, in our COVID resources, there's a whole folder just for relief funds. So anything that we hear of, including No Bosses One, when it's put together, we'll add in there. Um, yes, if you have problems, you can call the number that's the, in red, the call for assistance number about the process, English and Spanish. You can also uh, email, email us or call us. Um, our phone number is on our website, the usworker.coop website. Um, yeah, LLCs and partnerships should be fine applying for these loans. Um, there shouldn't be any problem with them at all. Um, I know that, uh, um, you know, this has been an ongoing battle about like getting support for worker cops explicitly from the federal level. But um, again, what the what the SBA officials I'm talking to are saying is that like there, there's not time right now to get into the specifics of like carving out like what is a like what does a worker cop mean from the federal government. But the the sense is that they're going to be forgiving and lenient on the terms of not the terms of the loans, but um, but the uh, 
about who gets approved for the lens because they just know that people need it. So uh, that's about the best that I can give you right now, but the, the rule of thumb is just like, go ahead and apply as soon as you can. Awesome. Thank you, Mo. I really appreciate you taking the time and being on the call. Oh, one, 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 yeah. one very important thing that I do want to say is that if you get one of these loans, you don't have to start even start paying it until a year from now. Um, and there's no prepayment penalty. So that is an important thing to just like factor in your head. Like this is a good loan to get. So that's it. There's another question about any talk of forgivable loans. Uh, yeah, I have not seen anything um, on forgivable loans as of yet, but I will definitely keep my eye out for this. Awesome. Okay, sweet. Thank you so much, Mo. And yeah, just like big ups to um, Mo at the Federation, U.S. Federation of Worker Cooperatives for like holding it down and like in such a short amount of time getting all of these resources and being a person up and uh, talking with the SBA. Um, awesome. Okay, great. So next we'll go to Charlotte um, from the Sustainable Economies Law Center to talk a little bit about California state resources. Charlotte? Great, thanks. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just uh, quickly go over some of the key resources I'm finding. Uh, unfortunately, I'll apologize in advance. I don't know the full details for all of these. I just did my best to highlight uh, a number that um, would be relevant for this group. So this is the central repository of all the different state level resources that have been dispatched as in response to COVID-19. So feel free to bookmark this. And if we go to the next slide. So this is really, I'm thinking of this in terms of resources available for um, co-ops as business owners and then resources available to business owners you know our members who are also employees or perhaps you you have actual employees within your co-ops um, that are non-members so looking at it from the ownership side there's a couple of things that um, as you might have already heard all tax return filings the extent the deadlines for those have been extended to July 15 and that's at the federal and state level that applies to LLCs, corporations, and co-op corporations, and also your personal income tax returns. There's been some questions around commercial rent. So this is going to be city by city. Uh, Governor Newsom did give an executive order around commercial evictions, but that was actually giving permission to local municipalities to make that decision. It was more of you can do this if you want to. And so I know that I'm in Sacramento, Sacramento's uh, uh, put a freeze on evictions related to non-payment of rent if that was an economic hardship caused by the pandemic. Um, I believe Oakland has done that as well. Um, in terms of financial assistance, Mo highlighted the most uh, available state level resource. So SBA, those SBA economic disaster loans, a lot of those are trickling down to the state levels. So that's Kind of the main resource that I'm seeing is really through loans and I will say from the webinars I've attended there's a lot of pushback on this using loans as another vehicle for financing which really just creates more debt so I know that some cities are responding by creating zero percent interest loans um, and I think the next person speaking might have some more information around that um, but unfortunately as much as I can find it's really uh, financial assistance is mostly through loans um, at the state level right now. There are a lot of um, alternatives that I'm seeing pop up. Uh, nonprofits uh, in the Bay Area, such as uh, Opportunity Fund, uh, iFund Women, they help you. iFund Women in particular, uh, I learned they have two grants right now and they are particularly looking for women um, entrepreneurs, women founded co-ops that are interested in crowdfunding. So that's uh, one way to raise um, capital without their using the loan programs. So next slide, there's been a lot of questions around what to do about employees. And so a lot of talk around unemployment insurance. So I'll just clarify kind of the key eligibility requirements around this. So uh, employees can, uh, for unemployment insurance if you've been let go through no fault of your own. So if you quit right around the same time that COVID-19 hit, unfortunately, 
typically the interpretation would be if you quit on your of your own will then unemployment would typically not be uh, available to you unemployment insurance that is but I, I have seen a lot of guidance uh, just advice um, lawyers are suggesting that you know go ahead and apply you never know so go ahead and apply and also apply like ASAP because there's going to be a long line as with everything else as with the SBA loans um, go ahead and start applying and so if you've uh, okay so just going over that if you're unemployed through no fault of your own it includes um, being furloughed includes um, reduced hours and I'll talk about that um, in a moment uh, and there are questions around okay so who is not eligible for this so unfortunately uh, if you are an independent contractor, if you're being paid through 1099, you can't apply for unemployment insurance. Uh, also, if you're an LLC partner that was receiving K-2s, unfortunately, this doesn't apply to you either. Um, doesn't apply to self-employed uh, folks and workers who had did not have proper employment authorization. Unfortunately, this doesn't apply to, uh, to you as well. Um, so you'll have to look at it from the, if you're an LC partner or if you are an immigrant co-op with LC partners, you uh, can seek relief from the business owner standpoint, not the employee owner, employee standpoint. So just making that distinction of, okay, do I need to look at it from business owner piece or the employee piece? Um, just continue in the employee piece. Um, just clarifying, this is actually something that Kirk from Slice of New York, uh, um, told us about this. Thank you so much, Kirk. Um, so if you suffer from reduced hours, there is partial unemployment insurance for you. Also, uh, and if your employer signs up for this thing called work share, that's another way to get unemployment insurance. So this is actually a lesser known pathway to get unemployment insurance. So this might be the way to go. The thing with the work share program is if, um, the co-op is looking to reduce rates and reduce, I'm sorry, reduce wages and reduce hours as an alternative to the layoff. They can sign up to the work share program so that they don't have to lay off the employees. Instead, the state can help you pay and make up for those reduced hours and wages. So work share program um, is another form of unemployment insurance um, and and how, to, how do you get access to all of this? So the best and easiest way to access unemployment insurance is going to their online portal. So the, H, uh, the link is written up here and they actually have a YouTube tutorial on how to apply for unemployment insurance. They have it in English, Spanish, um, Chinese, and several other languages. So this will be the easiest way to get access to unemployment insurance. And just to give you an idea, it is up to, I believe, 26 weeks. Is that right? Um, 26 weeks and um, about, uh, it, it, that's a maximum, 26 weeks of unemployment insurance. So I'll just stop there. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Um, let me see, I think there was a question about um and i don't know if you're able to answer this so it's totally fine if you can't if any of um the their employees are underemployed during this period and they collect partial unemployment are they required to look for other work um they don't want to lose them to these other jobs but if it comes down to it yeah so do you, do you have any response to that or do you did you read anywhere about that are they required to be looking for other work um yes they are required to be looking for other work i have uh colleague here with me who knows a little bit about it too. Um, <laughs> so you are supposed to be looking for work in order to get, but I'm not quite sure how they're going to be enforcing that. Okay. There okay. is that Thank time so limitation to it also of 26 weeks. Oh, 26 weeks. Right. For work okay. share, Kirk just said you don't have to be actively looking. Yes. Um, and awesome. I see another Thanks. question. Should I answer that one really quick for ITIN holders? Yeah, go for it. Um, is unemployment law for ITIN holders? So as far as I understand, um, you're supposed to have employment authorization in order to access unemployment insurance. So I think, uh, I, I, yeah, 
take that for what it is. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Charlotte. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to spend a couple minutes um, talking about the different cities and what they are offering. Um, Jasmine, um, are you able to yes. talk? Okay. Yes. Okay. So um, this week when we started planning this call, I, I started on a journey of trying to um, communicate with the city of San Francisco. Um, they were helpful in some ways in sending me these two resources. Um, one of them being San Francisco is deferring taxes and licensing fees. Um, just to go in a little bit more detail about that, I'm seeing that taxes for small businesses, um, gross receipts tax, payroll expense taxes, commercial rents taxes, and homelessness gross receipt taxes that um, would be usually due on April 30th have been waived until March 1st, 2021. Um, and for the deferment of the business licenses, they would be due usually on March 31st. Um, there's an extension for that till June 30th. And that applies to, um, it says the Office of Treasurer and Tax Collector and license fees on behalf of the Department of Public Health our department, the police department, and entertainment commission, and the office of cannabis. So, if that applies to you, and you pay business license fees, um, that deadline has been extended till June 30th. Um, the next thing being the gov San Francisco Government Small Business Resiliency Fund. So, um, just to stay on task, I'm just reading straight from the web page and also these two links that I'm referring to are in the um, mutual aid network database as well, so you can do more research. So I guess they are opening a resiliency fund in partnership with the Northeast Community Federal Credit Union. And to be eligible for this, you have to have at least one employee, no more than five employees, demonstrate a loss of revenue of 25% or more, have less than 2,500 gross receipts, and be engaged in activities that are regulated by the city and county of San Francisco and have license slash permits associated with that regulation. Um, two additional need for documentation would be proof of payroll costs, and also proof that you have definitely lost 25% or more in revenue. Um, there is contact information on this page for the Small Business Resiliency Fund for a Judy Lee. Um, it looks like there's only a mailing address, so you most likely have to write to get assistance. There. Oh, I also see it in an uh, email as well invest sf at sfgov.org um so yes that is pretty much the information that i was able to gather they also are having a let's see well actually that that's pretty much the gist of what uh, i was able to Thank you, Jasmine. Yeah, um, thank you for, for bringing that together for us. We were, um, Jasmine was talking with somebody from the city of San Francisco who was actually going to be on the call to present this information, but um, they weren't able to make it last minute. So thank you, Jasmine. Um, next is um, Yasi Eskandari from Sustainable Economies Law Center. Talk a little bit about some other city resources. Yasi? Okay, hi, all. Um, yeah, just to preface this most of the business related resources are going to be on the federal and state level but i'm just going to give a quick overview of some local responses local government responses um but if as i go through this if you know of some just type them into the chat box um i guess we'll start with um uh, the municipal utilities district eb mud is officially doing a moratorium on uh, water shutoffs so if your business or residents cannot pay for water utilities, um, it will not get shut off. Also, if your water has already been shut off, you can restore your services by calling that number. There's an effort right now underway to actually 
um, help get this information out to people whose water has been shut off prior to the moratorium. So if you're interested in getting engaged in that effort and getting EB mud uh, to do some on the ground door knocking, you can re um, get involved by following that link. Next slide. Okay, the city of Berkeley is just on Tuesday launched an emergency grant fund that gives is going to be providing $3 million uh, in funding to small businesses, nonprofits, um, nonprofit art organizations, and also residential tenants. Um, they um, are in the process of launching their website. So I think that's going to launch in two days. So keep an eye out for that. There's also the Berkeley Small Business Revolving Loan Fund. Um, and it uh, actually does give out grants to worker co-ops. I don't know what the status is, if that's been frozen or what because of this pandemic, but that is available to worker co-ops. And you can also find more information about the Revolving Loan Fund and uh, other um, funding resources uh, by following the link that I just shared on the chat. Next slide. And the city of Oakland has a web page that I've linked here, and you can also call the phone number there, but I don't know how responsive they'll be right now. They are <clears throat> really um, bumping up their Kiva lending program and trying to get people to uh, lend and um, look at that. So take a look. There's also the city, like um, was mentioned for the city of San Francisco, uh, the city of Oakland is deferring business tax um and waiving late fees so that, that's something you could take advantage of um, also regarding tracking information uh, you can fill out the business survey that the mayor put out um, it might also help for you to actually look for information that you should be tracking for your business and there's also links to legal assistance and other things next slide and the south bay thanks to kirk for highlighting some resources there um, the Silicon Valley Small Business Development Center is putting out um, uh, webinars all the time, so please take a look at that link. And they also put out a survival guide for small businesses. Santa Clara did a, um, a moratorium on electricity and water shutoffs as well. This is for residential and commercial customers. And also take a look at Silicon Valley Strong. That's gonna be an ever evolving hub of information for businesses and residents in the South Bay. Next slide. And this is just highlighting what the Berkeley Chamber of Commerce is doing uh, in the city of Berkeley. And they're gonna be putting out weekly uh, online meetings. So you can take a look if you're located there. Next slide. All right, thanks. Boom, thank you, Yassi. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, I've been getting a couple questions about the slide. So um, I sent out an email to everybody who RSVP'd at least an hour before the, or two hours before the call. Um, with the slides, the notes doc that um, we'll be taking some notes in, um, plus a database of all the resources that we're sharing, but I'm happy to send them out again um, after this. So, and then Charlotte just dropped into the slide, into the chat box, uh, this slide deck. So next we're gonna just like highlight some of the member resources because as cooperatives we're come, we come together to support each other. So the first is um, talking about Mandela Grocery uh, Cooperative, Adrian, um, Adriana, are you here? Adriana? Adriana, can you hear me? Okay, maybe Adriana's at um, Mandela doing, doing work, but um, Adriana, Adriana told me what they wanted to share was about um, access to healthy food that Mandela Grocery is trying to set up um, and partnering with a company called Pickup um, Delivery Partnership um, or Pickup. And so they're going to be trying to find ways to get their food to our local communities um, through delivery services. And I'm pretty sure that Pickup itself is a, um, is a cooperative itself. So. Um, and then David, uh, David Smathers more from Teamworks. Are you able to speak to this resource? I'll unmute you. Okay, sorry, I've been translating. We have a couple of our members on the call, um, so we're, we're doing, doing that in Spanish. Um, thank you for including us in this. Um, 
So Teamworks, as many of you know, is a, uh, Teamworks Co-op is a cleaning co-op based in Sunnyvale and serves the South Bay with uh, 20 full-time member owners. And like so many businesses and co-ops, um, all operations stopped on Tuesday with the uh, order to stay home. Um, and so we created this solidarity fund through our sister nonprofit that people can donate to. And the idea with the fund is to provide a stipend to member owners who've just lost all of their income, who don't qualify for um, unemployment insurance, like we just heard, and who aren't gonna qualify for the um, $1,000 payments or whatever is gonna come from Washington. Um, so we have to create our own fund to provide a stipend to members. We've been getting quite a good response of donations already. Um, and it looks like probably like half of the clients of the cleaning co-op are donating. The, we asked them to consider donating the amount that they would be paying for cleaning um, to support the workers during this time. And, and many are participating. Um, so, and then the idea is that it's not just to provide a stipend to survive, but it's um, to support an education program that we're doing online during this crisis. And we just actually had the first meeting. We had 17 worker owners connected on Zoom this morning for the first time. So that was very exciting in terms of the technology. And you know, we have members who didn't have internet at home and stuff. So a lot of technical challenges, but we had a really good meeting. Um, and we'd love your support. We could share the link to it if you can help share it. We're open to doing this um, with other co-ops. We're talking with a, a cleaning co-op in Boston that we work with. They may join this um, fund with us. Um, so we're open to ways to collaborate with others with it. Awesome, thank you, David. Really appreciate it. Um, one, another resource that um, is being created or uh, is we're trying to create is um, the Worker Cooperative Solidarity Response Fund at the Sustainable Economies Law Center. So just before I go into this, this is still moving through our internal democratic process. Um, but part of that internal democratic process was to bring this idea to the no boss community and get feedback so that we could um, finalize and shape it with in collaboration with our community. So um, this fund uh, that the Sustainable Economies Law Center would create is um, we're thinking about designating about $25,000 from our operating budget um, from 2020 and to temporarily or part-time employ um, between two to six worker owners from Bay Area worker cooperatives that are impacted by the coronavirus. Um, and this, this amount, $25,000, is not some arbitrary amount. Um, one of our dear uh, colleague Sarah Stevens is leaving the Sustainable Commons Law Center to work at the city of Berkeley as an attorney and hopefully uh, support us in pushing along different policy initiatives there from the inside. But um, this amount is basically what uh, we, the like cost of employing um, Sarah would have been plus all the overhead and stuff for the, for, for the next few months. Um, so we would take that salary to put it towards this. Um, what we wanted to do is to take this money and to push it out uh, to let the no boss community uh, know um, and then to seek invitations for folks to write us um, and nominate somebody from their team um, and we have a bunch of projects and things that we would ask people to do um, and most of the work is temp work that advances the cooperative movement and that we could plug people into um, and uh, what was it? And so basically today in one of the breakout groups, we're going to be talking about creating a cooperative fund. So this is part of that conversation is does this all sound good? What should we change? What should we modify? There's some debate about whether we should be giving these out as grants or loans um, versus employing people to do work with us at the law center to create more resources for the cooperative movement. So that's all to say um, this is still a work in progress. Um, the last piece um, that I wanted to share, maybe Mo, I think, is working with Shared Capital Cooperative around this, um, but that Shared Capital Cooperative is based in, um, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and so they lend to worker cooperatives, so maybe some folks on this call have received uh, loans from them, but they are offering 60 days of payment relief to borrowers right now, um, so that's one piece, but another is that they're actually um, 
recognizing that some cooperatives need additional cash to manage through um, their business disruptions and temporary closures. So they're creating an emergency loan fund. Um, and so any cooperative needing to access financing, so not only the ones who are currently getting um, loans or, or members of shared capital cooperatives, um, it's not only them who are able to access this, um, it's co-ops, uh, worker co-ops um, around the country. So if you're needing access, to financing, um, you can uh, email info at sharedcapital.coop or visit their website. Um, and there's an anticipated webinar that's coming up. I don't know, Mo, do you, do you know when that date is? It was just confirmed. We are going to do the uh, um, in English on March 25th. That's the right date. Um, it's going to be at 1 p.m. Eastern, so that's 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific, I believe. Um, so it's going to be an amalgamation of a bunch of different groups, NCBA, Shared Capital, Co-op, NCB, Capital Impact Partners, the Federation, and the Federation of Southern Co-ops. Um, and we'll cover a couple different topics, but one of them is definitely going to be um, crisis management, like managing your finances um, through through this. So um, I will, I'll forward to Ricardo um, when uh, we have the official invite for it, which will be up on Monday. Thank you, Mo. Really appreciate it. Um, and when we did the survey before the call, um, we asked people what they could provide. And so here are some answers um, that folks who are in our community who are on this call right now saying that they're um, able to offer labor um, or share and amplify social media messaging um, from folks in our community. Um, there's also uh, food distribution and preparation. Um, people offering to assist with building life safety and legalization permits, um, if that's an issue. So there's people in our community, we are a community full of resources. Um, and uh, this was some of the offerings that people started to offer before the, even the call. Um, one, uh, just two more slides before we do breakout groups. One is uh, we did create this, uh, this Google uh, workbook with uh, our spreadsheets, with um, resources, everything from today's call. But also what we're trying to do is allow you to start to crowdsource information and maybe even coordinate resources um, peer to peer. And so um, hopefully this is one of the things that we could be talking about as well in our breakout groups, but that this is a, a resource now for our community to use and to help coordinate um, uh, offerings and requests. Um, and here's some ways that, um, that of staying connected after um, today's call. So we're still going to be offering our Resilient Communities Legal Cafe. They're going to all be virtual. They're three times per month um, legal advice sessions. So we're going to be having this throughout. Uh, they're they're going to continue um, going. Uh, so that's one way uh, to continue connecting with the Law Center. Also, the U.S. Federation of Worker Cooperatives has a Slack. Um, communication uh, uh, app um, and so they have a workspace and they actually have a specific channel just for no box. so if you want to um, connect there you can do that and continue the conversation um, like I just mentioned that mutual aid data network database um, that was created and then there's a question um, this call I was talking with some folks from the NOBOX community they wanted to have some calls so I helped put this together with Jasmine this week and with the other presenters that have already talked. Um, but we don't have any future calls scheduled. So is that something that you all would want? Um, so maybe that's something that, that we can talk about in our breakout rooms. So we've gotten to that moment um, for our conversation. Um, what was it? So the idea here is to have 20 to 30 minutes um, to take uh, to to talk about these different areas. Um, at the beginning of the call, we asked what folks were interested in. Um, and uh, Charlotte let me know that um, creating a no boss cooperative fund, navigating financial challenges and ways to collaborate, um, and how food service co-ops are reorganizing to stay open were the three top um, vote getters. And so I put these little icons next to the topic areas. Um, so if you're able, what we're going to try to do next is to separate people out 
to whatever breakout group they want to have a conversation in um, based on the icon. So if you go to participants in the Zoom, um, uh, if you go to your Zoom and you see a toolbar at the bottom, you're going to see par um, participants, click that. And then at the bottom of the participants list, you're going to see little icons and you just click on the icon that associates with the breakout topic that you're interested in. People able to do that? I'm seeing a few people. Kirk, raise your hand. There's no, there's no raised hand. It's a clap for emergent space. <laughs> Okay. Can you repeat the instructions? I think some people need to, are having a hard time finding the buttons. Yeah, sure. So um, on the Zoom, uh, on, on Zoom, if you hover over um, the, uh, the screen where the slides are, you should have a tool pop, toolbar pop up um, at the bottom. Click on the thing that says participants. And then when the participants window pops up, you're going to see um, uh, those icons at the bottom. So a yes check mark, a no X, a go slower, go faster. And then if you click the three, you're going to see um, a thumbs up, thumbs down, clap, um, the coffee, and the time, uh, the clock. And so for creating a no boss cooperative fund, click go faster. If you want to talk about um, ways to collaborate together on looking after our children and what resources we can support each other with there, you can click the go slower. Navigating financial uh, challenges for co-ops and our, um, our workers and what ways can we collaborate is the check mark, yes. And then how are food service co-ops reorganizing to stay open and serve communities um, is the it's a little uh, coffee mug. So while you're all doing that, I'm going to set up the breakout rooms. And then, um, Let's see, Charlotte, are you able to um, drop the notes doc into the uh, um, chat box, please? I'm sorry, notes from the chat file? The notes, the notes doc that we were organizing today's call with. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. And then before I um, put people into breakout rooms to have discussions, um, I'm going to unmute everybody. So, and if you have any questions before we jump in, we can, we can have a short chat before we do that. Um, let's see. Um, and so what, before we go into the chat, um, okay, so I just unmuted y'all. So there's going to be some, maybe some cacophony a little bit, but, um, when you jump into those, into the meeting or into those breakout groups, there's, um, I'll share the, I'll try to pop into the different groups and then share a note talk where you can take notes. Um, but really the conversation is for us to, to come together and have it. So any questions before I start pushing people into the different breakout rooms? Um, Ricardo. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Lupe from the Colores. I have an uh, iPhone and I don't see the video. Sh I, I see you guys, but I okay. don't know how to to jump 
um, how to jump to the group. Yeah. And I can, I'll put you in the group. Which one would you like to go into? Um, I don't know. Um, probably okay. um, emerging space or creating Nova Cooperative Fund. I choose okay. uh, what Great. about the children, but I, I don't think have a lot of people there. So I'm, I'm open to moving on other, another group. Okay. Great. Um, okay. Sweet. So Charles, you mind helping me? Yeah. Um, is the session over the whole webinar over after the breakout groups or are we coming back to the full group? Um, so we're going to be uh, coming back to share.